you know, Russia, South Africa, and for the business Mediterranean style study abroad in Greece and Turkey program. She is also the director of the Robinson Honors Program and the director of the Robinson Business Learning Community. Good morning, everyone. I think it's still morning. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here and want to share with you just a comment before I start. One of the uh, courses that I teach is the capstone course in the College of Business for graduating seniors. And yesterday, I played the commencement speech from Steve Jobs that uh, he presented at Stanford University a few years ago. I've listened to this several times, but it's always a very moving speech. And the thing that really struck me yesterday was his story about connecting the dots. And if you think about it, that's what we're doing here. That's why we come to these conferences, um, to connect the dots. But Steve Jobs' point was that you can't really connect the, job, the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So it's only after we go home and, and think about some of the concepts and ideas and communications that we've had with our colleagues that, that you can really sit back and, and try to make sense of everything and see how it fits with what you're trying to do. <clears throat> of course, it's true for life as well, not just for our professional careers. Can't hear it. Oh, louder, sorry, sorry, here. Better? Did you hear the part about connecting the dots? <laughs> okay. Well, many of you look at me, uh, who have been here at previous conferences, and you think of, oh, she's gonna talk about Lewis. <laughs> You're right. But I'm gonna talk about Lewis in connection with someone much older, Aristotle. <clears throat> the picture that I have on my first screen is a sculpture in North Carolina in the uh, Technology Triangle. And it was created by a Czech sculptor. And what's interesting about it is it rotates. It's metamorphosis. And my very last slide, you'll see that it rotates and changes into the face of a person. So it's constantly moving, and I think it represents what we're doing here today, constantly changing, making things better, hopefully. So I come to you from Georgia State University, and I teach mostly strategy, international business, run some study abroad programs, which are really, really exciting, as well as the honors program, which I'm thrilled to do. <clears throat> So I think, it, as by way of introduction, is this better now? Can you hear me? We can think of pedagogy that enables both discovery and dissemination. Okay, so we're interested in both the teaching aspect as well as the research. We want it to inspire some epic research and hopefully some seminal scholarship of teaching. It's epitomized through ethos, pathos, and logos in the context of academic globalization. This is what many would deem to be a higher collaborative pedagogy. <clears throat> so to me, it's about the intersection of a Hungarian rhapsody. If you think about it, this is something that's beautifully sad. It's beautiful and it's sad at the same time. Something unexpected. The Greek Parthenon, and the reason I thought of the Greek Parthenon is every year we take students to Athens, and of course we visit the Acropolis, the Parthenon, and in listening to the guide speak about the Parthenon, one of the things they talk about is the structure and how if you think about the columns, the columns in the Parthenon, and if you were to extend these columns into the sky, then these columns would actually intersect, which is pretty amazing. So this is what started my thinking along these lines. So 
we're going to look at ethos, which represents character, pathos, which represents emotions, and logos, which represents logic. In this paper, I'm exploring these three pivotal constructs and establishing what I call a communication framework to facilitate the interdisciplinary language and communication. And of course, there's the Parthenon. This is something that really epitomized Greek thought. It celebrated the birthplace of democracy, and for the first time, it depicted everyday citizens, which in essence tried to underscore their impactful role. <clears throat> So day and night blend at some point. Yin and yang, ethos, pathos, and logos are interrelated, interacting, and interchanging learning spheres. Okay, so they're constantly moving, constantly dynamic, constantly learning. If you think about the current world on any level, really it's about miscommunication. <laughs> And to me, it's imperative that we launch some sort of language tool that underscores the global commonalities and somehow mitigates these cultural differences so that we, in essence, really communicate. If we could do this, then such a platform would really foster interdisciplinary research, education, and communication. Now, ethos. Pathos and logos represent cross-disciplinary communication devices, which can synergistically transform and ignite academic globalization. These concepts, to me, are linked with Lewis's seminal work and his LML framework. So particularly relevant is the thought that I alluded to earlier, the idea that these columns slant inwards. And if you think about it, they extend into the sky. They would intersect approximately one mile above the Earth. I knew these Greeks were pretty smart. <laughs> <clears throat> so precisely this extension beyond traditional thought and the subsequent intersection in the sky represent the character credibility, which is the ethos, the emotion, which is the pathos, and the logic, which is the logos. Thinking outside the box. LMR framework, linear active, multi-active, reactive. I've talked to you many times about this, but I'm just going to refresh for just a minute. These are the vehicles for interdisciplinary language, which enables interdisciplinary communication. So if we extend this LMR framework, beyond the conventional boundaries, just like the, the Parthenon. Then this becomes the foundation for what I think is interdisciplinary language fostering interdisciplinary communication. So the picture that I have at the bottom is just what I call the palette of language, the different colors. Now ethos, pathos, and logos being Ken really over 2,000 years ago. Okay, Aristotle argued that per persuasion can be divided into these three categories, ethos, pathos, and logos. So when we spoke about these, by the way, does anybody know what that is a picture of on the left? Really? Nobody? Hmm? Did I hear something? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Hmm. No, it's the uh, library at Ephesus. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> at Ephesus. Ephesus in uh, Turkey. Yeah, I think I saw you there. <laughs> this is one of the most uh, best preserved Roman ruins, okay? <laughs> but it's really remarkable. <clears throat> okay, so it's not Greek, but still, you know, looks good. Uh, for ethos, which is character in Greek, the ethical appeal, this is that persuasion emanates from credibility, the authority, or the reputation of the speaker or the writer. 
So an ethos principled argument is characterized by an appeal based on ethics or credibility. Pathos is all about experience, suffering, it's the emotional appeal. So persuasion is grounded in the sympathy and the emotion and the instinct. A pathetic story conveys emotion and imagination. The audience is empathetic with the values, the beliefs of the speaker and the writer. And logos is the logistical appeal. Persuasion rests with reason, refers to an argument's logical appeal. The internal consistency of the argument and supporting evidence is really of paramount importance. So perhaps if A, then B. Now most important is how something is communicated. Not necessarily what, but how. Challenge to explain the international business cultures, Lewis classified them simply and more comprehensively. He conceived of the LMR framework, which eventually gave birth to Culture Active and to ICE. And these are cross-cultural tools which are used for many things. Um, and in fact, when I was listening to the presentation uh, earlier, from uh, professors Styron and Styron at Duke, they actually used the uh, Culture Active and ICE to form teams, to form diversity in their teams. So this is one of the tools that you could actually use for team-based learning. Mm. Okay, so basically this is the LMR framework, linear active, multi-active, reactive, different cultural classifications. You can look across any one of these and you know people who fit these categories. <laughs> Just looking across the top, you know people who talk half the time, you know people who talk most of the time, and you know people who listen most of the time. Okay, that's just one example. At the very bottom, if you read across, you know people for whom truth before diplomacy is most important. Doesn't matter what you're talking about, the truth is the most important. Then you know people who, for whom flexible truth matters. It depends. And then under the reactive category, there are people for whom diplomacy is more important than truth. Diplomacy trumps truth regardless. This is true for all the categories. So both the uh, culture active and the ICE cross-cultural tools help to assess where you as an individual would fall with this LMR framework. And then you can compare yourself within your organization, within your team. You can form teams using these uh, tools. So they're really quite useful and quite interesting. People tend to learn a great deal about themselves, just like you learn a great deal about yourself when you go to a foreign country. So I see the contribution of the paper looking at this LMR linkage to celebrated philosopher Aristotle, who looked at persuasion through ethos, pathos, and logos. Now, Aristotle's favorite was logos, but all three really served to elevate communication to the next level, in my view. <clears throat> so this trilogy was inspired really by Greek thought in similar fashion to the Parthenon, and even if you think about the Hungarian Rhapsody. And I say that because I'm Hungarian, right? <laughs> Aristotle argued for writing effectiveness. This paper argues for interdisciplinary communication effectiveness enhanced through this other framework, the LMR framework. So capitalizing on the LMR framework, integrating the basic components of ethos, pathos, and logos, incorporating the Parthenon, the columns intersecting above the earth, and projecting this consortium beyond traditional thinking, and that's really the key here, is I want to step outside the box, I want to go beyond, because how many of you knew that the Parthenon columns intersected at some point? How many of you knew that? Very good. Anybody else know that? You don't want to raise your hands, or <laughs> really you didn't know? <laughs> Seriously, that's something that's very unique and interesting and I think conceptually applies to many things. When you take the culture active assessment tool, 
you end up with this triangle. Lewis formed this triangle according to the countries as he's perceived them on the LMR framework. And what happens is, talking about dots, you end up with a dot. <laughs> and based on your answers, your dot ends up somewhere on this triangle. Okay, so you are either very linear active, very multi-active, very reactive, or somewhere in the middle. And the LMR framework is then linked to countries and cultural differences, similarities among countries. So if you want a very diverse team, then you want people who are all over this triangle. If you want people who tend to be more multi-active or more reactive, whatever, then you can form your groups accordingly. People who end up in the middle tend to be good mediators because they see all sides. And interestingly, people who are involved in business, whether they're business students or run their own business or work for a large business organization, tend to be more linear active, interestingly. Here's just another example. So the LMR framework plus the ethos, pathos, and logos. <coughs> Here you have the representation of what I'm associating, the pathos, being emotional with the multi-active type of person, the ethos being more ethical or ethics, being more reactive, and logos, which rests on reason, being more of the linear active type of person, okay, and all linked to the art of persuasion. This together equals looking at the world through different horizons, looking at the world from your perspective, if you happen to be a linear active type of person, you need to see what the other person is seeing. They happen to be multi-active in this particular slide. The areas in the middle, in the middle diamond, are the areas that you wanna emphasize because those are the commonalities. So this is how we enable communication, interdisciplinary and inter cultural, cross-cultural communication, is by being able to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Okay, so another example with linear active and reactive. Putting yourself in the shoes of someone who's reactive if you happen to be linear active. Okay, and then multi-active, reactive. Depending on where you are, you really need to be able to see the other horizon. And then country differences. So if you happen to be Japanese, what is the US person thinking? What's important to them? How can we emphasize the commonalities and minimize the differences? <clears throat> also, US versus German, same thing. Okay, we have the differences, but we also have the commonalities. And this is important in any kind of communication, whether you're negotiating or anything. Japanese and German horizons. French and US. So the, the LMR contrast constructs are coupled with the ethical, the emotional, and the logical elements of Aristotle's persuasion. And we get this interdisciplinary language or interdisciplinary communication. So the pivotal role that these key elements play in viewing the world through the linear active, multi-active, and reactive constructs allow communication to really underscore the commonalities that I showed you in the diamonds and minimize the differences. And if we can do that, if we can really do that, then this will result in true interdisciplinary communication and true cross-cultural communication. So maybe some of our leaders across the world might be better served thinking about some of these concepts. Shoes, very important. So remember I'm talking about being in other people's shoes. <laughs> Not talking about shopping for shoes here. This model really captures for me where academic globalization is headed and where it needs to be headed. So I'm building on the model of the Parthenon 
suggesting the LMR framework in conjunction with Aristotle's elements served to highlight the unique horizons of both communication and persuasion, underscoring the, com underscoring the commonalities. <clears throat> I've talked about the intersection of the two trilogies, the linear active, multi-active, reactive, with ethos, pathos, and logos, and I'm proposing, proposing communicating outside the box, beyond the triangle, where the Parthenon pillars interconnect and language extends beyond cultures. Let me think about that, beyond cultures, maximizing harmonization and fostering interdisciplinary communication. Now, here's the face that I promised you, that that sculpture in North Carolina actually turns into. This is pretty amazing. I want to thank you very much, and I think we probably will have time for